Crystal to organize these receptions to um, explain a little bit some parts of the site with which um, you may not be so familiar, but also to describe some of the new projects that we're developing in-house. I realize that you receive emails from us, and I'm not sure which ones you read and don't. Um, so I'm, I'm bringing them up for discussion, and I really would appreciate your comments and feedback because the whole ethos of F1000 is that we try to build things that scientists find useful and that they um, appreciate and Faculty of a Thousand was built in that way. We consulted hundreds of scientists to come up with a product that they said would help them save time sifting through the literature. So my name is Kathleen Wetz. I'm the um, editorial director for biology and my colleague Vikram is here as well. Um, so when people, scientists, talk to us about Faculty of a Thousand, um, they, there's sort of three things that keep coming up, and Martin Raff actually um, describes it best. So he says that he finds F1000 useful for identifying um, key papers outside his own area, um, but also for highlighting papers and journals that he doesn't normally read. And in fact, in F1000, as you know, we allow you to evaluate any article from any journal that captures your interest. Currently, the site, the site contains evaluations from over 3,000 different journals, but that list is growing as new journals um, come into being. Another thing that he said he found useful is that he would read an article and get very excited about it and think, wow, this is fabulous, but I actually don't have a colleague to discuss it with. And then he would see an F1000 evaluation come in from a peer who he respected, and it sort of gave him a confirmation of this paper really is as interesting as I thought when I read it. Um, currently in F1000, we have 10,000 uh, experts involved. Um, we have heads of faculty, heads of section, faculty members, and associates. And um, I've just put a few statistics regarding some of the other numbers, such as having over 100,000 evaluations currently on the site. So we launched with biology in 2002 and with medicine in 2006. And we get about 1,500 evaluations a month. And we have 32 faculties, um, starting from structural biology and the sort of biology half of F1000 going all the way through to psychiatry, and neurology, and oncology, and the medical side. We also have overseeing us an international advisory board who advises on bigger picture um, issues. And you may recognize some of the names of the people um, involved. Um, in terms of subscribers, there's 316 subscribing institutes and this means that we have over 400,000 people with access to the site. Um, I just wanted to mention that University of Groningen doesn't get subscribed, which you may not be aware of because as a faculty member you have full access to the site. Um, and just to give you an idea of um, average visits, there's um, over 150,000 um, visits to the site um, every month. So now I'll quickly go through parts of the site which may not be so familiar to you. And this is going to require a little bit of technical stuff, which I'm not so good at. Hold on. So I'm going to the live site now. And I don't know if all of you have um, my F1000 set up. So for contributors, we have search alerts that we will set up for you and send you and include papers that you may want to evaluate. But this is actually something else. This is the part of the site that all users have access to, and it allows them to tailor and customize the site to their interest, and is where you see evaluations made by other faculty members. And you can tailor this to sections of interest. So I'll quickly show you how you might go um, do this. Go into Edit My Sections. I did have access earlier. Don't know what's happening. Um, Actually, if you look here on the left side, you'll see all the sections that I've selected as being of interest. And here in the middle are all the evaluation, evaluated papers that recently have been entered into the site that are relevant to the sections that I've set over in, of interest to me. I'm also able to set this up as an email alert so that, for example, every week I can receive all the papers evaluated to the sections of interest um, from all the different journals that have been evaluated. Okay, so if I go into edit my sections, 
you'll see we've listed the different disciplines in medicine and biology separately. So let's say I'm interested in cancer biology. I click here, and um, I already have those two sections ticked. So I'll try and pick an area that I don't have. Um, oops, sorry. So if I go into cardiovascular medicine, oh, I've got those ticked. <laughs> I've obviously done this several times. So here, for example, if I wanted to have acute renal failure, I just tick the box and then scroll down and update my selection. And now I will receive all the papers that get coded to that section um, sent to me. And if I go here into the left column, into my email alerts, it will show me um, what I've arranged. So I've got my section alerts set up for every seven days and I'm getting 100 articles sent to me. So that's the way you would set it up. Any problems, you just need to contact your person at F1000 with whom you normally interact and just say to them, can you please set up a My F1000 um, alert for me? The other thing that a lot of people aren't aware of is that it is possible to search PubMed within F1000, so all of PubMed. So the way to do that is if you go to the F1000 homepage, we have evaluated PubMed. And so for, if I type in um, a thing that I'm interested in, um, I will see, hopefully, the results of everything relevant to my search in PubMed, but I'll also see if any of these have been evaluated in F1000. So you see here on the list, these results are all the results from PubMed, and then the ones that have been evaluated in F1000 are highlighted with a badge. So it means that you can do very, basically as we say, an evaluated PubMed search. So you can search all of PubMed and then see what content is appearing within F1000. Another thing that I wasn't sure whether you were aware of is, um, we also allow users to make comments in F1000. So we only invite evaluations from faculty members, but once something has been evaluated, users can make comments on those evaluations. Um, so let me just look up for something that I know has um, comments on it. So this paper here, shifts in zooplankton, you'll see listed, it's got one evaluation, one dissent, and two comments. And if I go to look at it, just to give you an idea of what it looks like on our site, um, there's a tab here that shows you the comments, which you can click on. And the comments are attributed, so you can see who has said, who has made the comment, and where they're from. And here's a second comment. Um, and we also have dissents. And I wasn't sure if you were aware that this is something that's possible for you to do as faculty members. So if you notice a paper that's been selected by another faculty member that you were quite happy not to select yourself because you did not think it was a good paper, but then you notice somebody else has, you can write a dissent to say, I disagree. I think there's major flaws with this paper. Uh, currently on the site, about 1%, um, if, if even, um, of, of the evaluations receive a dissent. So it's not a very common thing. You can find um, all of this if you go into advanced search. So if you go into advanced search on F1000, there are boxes here where it says you can search for anything with a dissent or with a user comment. And so that's another way to find content that has these things attached to it. The other thing I, I wasn't sure whether you were aware is we have something called rankings. So I'm just going up here on the, the navigation bar there. And we have rankings both for articles and for journals. And um, you can see, for example, the top articles of all time as well as what we call a current top 10. So if we go into the current top 10, this will show you papers that recently have received a very high rating. And by rating, um, I wasn't sure, again, if you were aware that that score here, 31, 
reflects a consensus score of all the faculty members. So as a faculty member, when you evaluate a paper, you give it a recommended, a must read, or an exceptional. And those are translated into scores. So a recommended is a six, a must read is um, an eight, and an exceptional is a 10. And then what we do is we take into consideration the fact that a paper, in this case, has been evaluated by nine people. And so there's additional uh, sort of incremental scores given for each additional evaluation that is made for that paper. Um, the other thing that we have in rankings is we have um, the most viewed papers, and we also have something called hidden jewels. An idea behind the hidden jewels is that these are papers that are um, evaluated from less obvious journals. And this is a very popular feature of the site because some people say, well, um, F1000 identified the nature paper I already knew about. Whereas here what we have is papers that are coming from journals that perhaps isn't on everybody's reading list. Maybe it is on yours, but it's not something that everybody, all the labs, would be looking at necessarily. Um, we also recently have introduced journal rankings. Um, the thinking behind that is that we already had all the data on the site, and a lot of people were asking us, how do the different journals do within F1000? What's interesting about F1000 is that it focuses on the primary research, so it would be different from impact factor in that impact factor often can be skewed by reviews. Um, whereas here, we have um, rankings that are based on the primary research ratings that faculty members give to a paper, and then we calculate how the journal does. The scores are normalized, so we take into account the volume of publications by that journal. Um, compared to how, mu how much of that content is actually evaluated in F1000. So the, the obvious journals do well, there's no big surprise. However, what's possible to do here is that it, you can drill down. So you can go, for example, um, dermatology is perhaps not the best example. Um, so let me pick another faculty, sorry. So let me take um, a faculty that's maybe more familiar to you. So if we take anesthesiology, um, so we're able to drill down at the faculty level and you'll see hopefully journals that are familiar to you um, on the list, but then you're also able to go down to the level of the section. So you're able to go down, for example, to pain management to see how the journals do at that level. And what we have here is here 10 reflects the number of articles from that journal evaluated within F1000. Um, there were 12 evaluations for those 10 papers. And 83 reflects the number of articles that were published by that journal within that time frame. So basically F1000 evaluated 10 out of 83 papers. So that's where the normalization comes in. And we also look at the individual artif article factors given to that, um, the, the papers that have been selected. Okay, um, some new projects. Um, we have something called F1000 Reports, which is uh, an open access uh, review journal within F1000. Um, we have one in biology and medicine. These are indexed in PubMed um, and unusual for reviews, like I said, they're open access, which means that if somebody searches on PubMed for a review on a particular topic, they will come across this review and immediately be able to access the full text. I'm always keen to hear suggestions of um, topics that you feel you should cover. The thinking behind the reports is that F1000 looks at individual articles, but sometimes there's a cluster of articles that suggest a field that is emerging, and then we're keen to commission a report to, just, to sort of give us the bigger picture of what this cluster of papers is indicating. And the reference list of the report is annotated with F1000 evaluations. The author of the report is a faculty member, which means that if they notice some key papers have not yet been evaluated in F1000, 
they can go back and evaluate those papers. So this is the reference list, and as you see, most of the references come from F1000, and so it gives you a good indication of what the important discoveries have been in that field. Another thing that we've recently developed is something called F1000 posters, which you may have received um, an email about. Um, it sits in a slightly separate part of the site. This is an open access repository for posters. Um, anybody can submit posters to the service, um, and some of them are evaluated by faculty members, and it's clearly indicated on the F1000 site which posters have been evaluated. I think you're going to talk about this a little bit more, so I'm not going to go into too much depth about this now. And a similar project that we're developing and has not yet launched is something called F1000 Research. You'll soon be receiving an email from us about this project. Um, we have not yet launched the service, um, but we have um, basically a blog um, site where we describe what our intentions are. Um, I'm trying to find, so here, this first blog describes what the vision is behind this project. The three main sort of aspects of this service is that it would be immediate publication. So there would not be peer review before publication. Somebody would submit what they wanted to publish and then the, 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 public, the peer review would be done post-publication. And it would also be open. So you could see who the peer reviewers are and what their comments were. Everything would be attributed. The other thing is that the data would be published separately from the conclusions and um, the, I'm trying to think, um, the sort of models. So data would be published as a separate document and there would be data sharing which means that if somebody wanted to pull data from several different places they could do that to have a sort of discussion about these data and attribute the sources for the data um, if you want to find out more please go to f1000 research and my colleague Rebecca Lawrence is the person who's looking after this um, and her name is appears on this um, blog and she would be keen to receive your input and suggestions about this. So those are the main things about the site that um, you may not be familiar with. I have a few other things that I wanted to mention. Sorry. Sorry, I just have to go through because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to go live. So I had some slides prepared. Um, we have various partnerships um, that we've arranged. Um, one that may interest you in particular is with Dynamed, who are going to be incorporating F1000 content into their service. Uh, we're also in discussions with Mendeley and Papers, who are keen to collaborate with, with us. Um, and we also are affiliated with various um, societies, as you'll see here. I don't know how to indicate here. <laughs> um, who take some of our evaluations to appear on their site so that if they publish a journal, um, they may want to feature our evaluations as a way of indicating how well some of their papers have done. So um, it's just to give you an indication that we're trying to increase the visibility of F1000 um, outside of the F1000 site. Another project that we're starting is F1000 clinical trials, and I'm not sure if some of you are already involved with that. Um, so currently what we're doing is scanning over 200 um, specialist journals and extracting randomized controlled trials, and then um, getting faculty members to evaluate them and creating basically a complete coverage of clinical trials. So this is a little bit different from the main service in that it's trying to be more comprehensive and systematic, specifically about clinical trials. If you're interested in this side of the service, my colleague Ian Stoneham is the editorial, editorial director for medicine, and this is what he is currently developing. Some other new initiatives. Um, 
I'm always keen to hear of any sections or faculties that you feel are missing within the service. So if you've noticed there's areas that we are not covering currently, um, I'm always um, interested in hearing about that. Um, we're always growing the number of faculty members that we have in F1000. And we're hoping to soon have a phone app to make um, accessing the site and making your submissions a little bit easier. Um, just a few things about making evaluations. Some people weren't aware that we actually are quite happy if you want to make your comments short and just make it two sentences or so. If you want to write longer, that's great, but you don't need to. Uh, we also love multiple evaluations. So if you notice that somebody has already evaluated something, please don't let that stop you. Your endorsement really helps um, to give more significance to that, that paper. Um, basically select anything that you would recommend to a colleague and say, look at this. That's the whole idea behind the service. You can also pick older. So if in the process of writing a review, for example, you see a paper from 1985 that you think, wow, this is an overlooked gem, we're also interested in those evaluations. So don't let that hold you back. Um, and the last thing is we have some t-shirts and sweatshirts, if you would like. Um, there are samples up here. And you just need to sign in the form, which one you would like, um, and we'll post it to you. And so you'll see they're Darwin's finches with uh, the different size beaks and saying naturally selected. So thank you very much for your contributions. Um, I've got time for a few questions if you had anything that you wanted to bring up. I yeah? have only one, uh, not one, one question I have is uh, it's about actually, uh, uh, I, I think about actually one faculty one thousand how it's organized. I mean, what actually is supposed to do? We do a review and then it's like, like a social science, social network discussion kind of thing. So it's like more uh, an organization with a predefined goal or <coughs> what, what actually it's all about. Okay, so the main... <laughs> The main aim of F1000 was to help people sift through the literature and to create an expert international journal club to assist in sifting through the huge amount of articles that are being published. And the idea was that no one person would have to do a huge amount of work. They would do what they normally do for themselves, which is that every researcher to remain competitive needs to read. Um, either through refereeing or reading articles that are published and have to make assessments as to how good or not that article is. And we wanted to take advantage of the work that already is being done and say, okay, after you've done this analysis of the articles that you need to read, which ones have caught your eyes and you think merit being pointed out as being interesting and important? And then writing a very brief opinion about that article. The result is that we get a big database of expert opinion of the key articles within many different disciplines, which users can then customize and say, I'm interested in pain management, or I'm interested in the cytoskeleton. What have your panel of experts indicated as being the really key papers this last week in this area? So eventually what we would like is that there be more interaction with the global community. So we would like to get people to come in and make comments and, and discuss. However, that isn't the main aim of the service. The main aim really is to have an expert panel who help us sift through what are the really seminal discoveries. I don't know if that ex sort of answers your question. Yeah, well, I discussed this already. One of the uh, items is, well, um, well, we are all quite busy, uh, and besides reviewing papers for journals, being that through the boards of journals, whatever, um, well, at a certain point in time, I was asked by one of my colleagues from the international fields to contribute, and the question is, what do I get out of it? Um, well, I have, I have to do some work, I have to put something, uh, well, on the web, um, as a matter of fact, it could be of interest, but it's another piece of work. 
Yeah. Fair enough. Um, that's it, it is by invitation, and some people um, feel that it's they they're happy to share with others what they are doing for themselves, and that they get to see what other people are contributing. So for them, this this is a, a fine arrangement. We do offer a few things, but nothing that actually we can't pay. 10,000 people, anything close to what they are worth. So that's uh, a bit of, you know, if, I'm not sure if that's what you're asking. Um, so what we have is an arrangement whereby the poorest countries get free access to our site, and we have sponsorship arrangements for the countries that are considered the middle in terms of the World Bank. And so for any of your colleagues who are in those countries, what you do, we then in return offer free access to the whole institute within those countries. So we sort of try to do a quid pro quo in that we can give back to the scientific community in this way. The other thing that we recently arranged is travel grants for associates. So if you want to involve some of your younger scientists in making evaluations, we've started arranging travel grants that they can apply for. Um, and again, so we're trying to give back to the community in some other way. Um, but if it's something that you feel that you're not getting in return, um, something that benefits you, then obviously... Um, we're well, I love the idea of them for, for discussion, uh, particularly for, I think, for young researchers. Uh, but then the system should be uh, completely open and free for everybody? Um, the service requires, we have about 100 people on staff to run the service. Um, it's a very expensive service to run. Now that's what I understand. But in order, well, to reach your goals, that is in the global open communication, yeah. you need as much as contributors or discussions or participants whatever, uh, who can indeed discuss articles, findings, in view of their own findings and research. What, what people, there's a lot of discussion on the blogs about open commenting. And so PLOS, for example, was keen to develop this idea of an article, article level metrics with open commenting, where everybody was supposed to come in and do something like faculty of a thousand, but with nobody running it. Just leave it open for everybody to come along. And basically, nobody does. So the reality is that when you open it up for everybody and just say, please come along and make some comments, it doesn't work, or it doesn't seem to work currently. Maybe in the future, things will work differently. But currently, as you said, people are incredibly busy. And unless there is maybe somebody behind the scenes encouraging them, they're unlikely to come in and make the comments. And those are the people that are actually most valued. That's the other thing that's coming across very strongly in the blog discussions. People actually aren't that interested in just anybody's comments. They're interested in certain individuals, key individuals, who, whose opinions they value. One of the things I didn't mention is that we actually do provide another service for faculties, which is to help them identify papers that are interesting to them. So I talked about my F1000, but we also have something called contributor searches. And we have one tool in particular that's called a cluster search. And I don't know if you've been told about this. Um, some people say that that in itself, for them, is so valuable that that is, uh, it makes the, it balances the equation for them because this tool helps them find articles and saves them a lot of time. And so in return, they're quite happy to give us their time for that assistance. We're, we feel this tool is so important that we've now devoted a lot of time to developing it further. And it's basically a tool that learns. So it, the way it works is that you put some seed articles into it. So you have maybe different themes of, area, of things that interest you that you work on. Within each theme, you identify articles that are the kinds of articles that you would like to be told about. And on that basis, rather than keywords, is actually based on articles, it will find relevant articles. But it will learn so that when 
you get the suggestions from it, you will say, this is relevant, this isn't relevant, this is not relevant. And slowly you will become better and better at finding the articles that really are important for you. We're hoping that provide, by providing something like that, 